the sacrum. So here we're looking at an anterior point of view of the sacrum. So this is going to be the anterior or ventral surface. Some people also call it the pelvic surface, sorry, just to give you three names for the one thing. Notice though, of course, that it's concave. So if you're looking at a concave, the concave side is anterior, ventral or pelvic. What we've got up the top, or actually first down the bottom, is the apex. So where it's narrow is the apex. The top bit is the base, where it's broad. On the base, we've got this ridge here, which is the promontory. I'll just turn it so we're looking at a lateral point of view. You can see how the promontory uh, sticks out there. So that's the sacral promontory. And then either side of that, we have the alar. And the alar are the, are the alar means wings. So they're the wing-like bits either side there of the promontory. Uh, and of course, if you're looking from an anterior point of view, you have anterior or ventral sacral foramina. Righto. So then let's have a look posteriorly. So we're looking at a posterior point of view on the sacrum. Firstly, we have superior articular processes and then of course there are facets on the processes. So that whole bump there is the superior articular process. This face here on it is the superior articular facet. Um, then we've got posterior or dorsal sacral foramina. And if we look from a superior point of view, of course this is the sacral canal. So it's just a continuation of the vertebral canal, but in a, in a fully formed sacrum, it's closed off at the back. Okay, so that's kind of a complete tunnel. Then, if we're looking again, still posterior point of view, we can see a median sacral crest. Now that's made up of bumps that before the vertebrae were fused would have been the spinous processes. So you can see, that you can see there's some gaps in that, but together those bumps make up the median sacral crest. Then, not far from it, just here, just medial to the sacral, the dorsal sacral foramina, there's uh, an intermediate sacral crest. Now, if we look at it from a lateral point of view, there's not really much of a crest there to see. There's a couple of small bumps. They would have been the superior and inferior articular processes before the vertebrae were fused. And then lateral to the sacral foramina, we've got a lateral sacral crest, there's a little bit to see if you look at this one from a lateral point of view. There are a couple little bumps there. They, of course, would have been the transverse processes that make up those bumps. So, if there was a line of blue tack here, it's lateral sacral crest. If there's one here, it's intermediate. If there's one here, right in the midline, median sacral crest. But it's really the, the big obvious one. Now then, at the inferior end of the sacral canal, there's a, a slit-shaped opening here, which is the sacral hiatus. Now, in theory, on the ends there, oh, you can just see them. There are little bumps there, little processes on the end. They're the sacral cornua. So that's just corn, then you, a eh, sacral cornua, little bumps here. But on this particular um, bone, uh, when we get to the coccyx, here are the coccygeal cornua, these little horn-like parts here, and that's how they're supposed to look. The coccyx has got it right, the sacrum is not really putting in a very good effort here. But that's what the cornua are supposed to look like, these little horns like little, little canine teeth or something sticking up there. Okay, now then if we look at a lateral point of view on the sacrum, uh, we've got an auricular surface here. Don't call it articular, it is an articular surface, but auricular, it's supposed to look ear-shaped. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean my ears are not good, but they don't, unless they don't look like that. Um, then we've got, behind it, we've got a sacral tuberosity, and that's this whole rough and patch here, it's quite big. Some tuberosities are just a big lump. This one not, it's not. It's even got a, a concavity in it there. But that whole thing is the sacral tuberosity there. That's where the interosseous sacroiliac ligament is going to attach in line. Okay, so I think, uh, I think that's everything on the sacrum. Um, what we've got though now is the coccyx, where we can just look at transverse processes either side and the cornua, which we saw previously, and the apex, which is this end here. So that's the coccyx.